Uh, Nancy, how about a, how about a, a Well, hey everyone, it's Jonathan from Southbrook, and I am here with Nancy Reed. So a few weeks ago, I started seeing articles uh, that talked about the need for mental health awareness, improving our mental health issues, uh, pastor mental health issues, as well as pastors wanting to help their congregation through this time. And so I thought it'd be wise to invite one of our church members, Nancy, to come and speak to us, uh, to share with us some thoughts, uh, to share with us some ways that we can be aware of our own mental health during this unprecedented time that we're in. So, Nancy, thank you. Thanks for coming. You're Thanks welcome. for being a part of this. Thanks Nancy, for having me. <laughs> thank you. Tell me a little bit about yourself, maybe your professional background. Okay. Um, I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist. Um, I am a psychotherapist at a local hospital, um, primarily working with children, um, but I am licensed to work with adults as well. Um, I've been doing psychotherapy for over 10 years, so. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, thanks for being a part. Thanks for helping us out. Yeah, I know thanks that for having me. A lot of our people have needs. Mm -hmm. I've been getting a lot of calls and emails from a good chunk of our church mm -hmm. family, as well as from a lot of our pastors as well. Mm -hmm. and we've been picking up there's some common themes of anxiety and grief and fear and different things like that. So mm -hmm. what are some of the things that you're aware of that people are experiencing during this pandemic? I'm not surprised by that, um, Pastor. We, I can see how you are getting a lot of calls regarding what's going on. Um, I think most people are experiencing um, what we call collective, collective grief, which is um, grieving through so many losses at the same time, right? Um, we've learned to grieve over a death, but now we're having to grieve over lots of things, right? Mm -hmm. So you're grieving over a loss of a job. Um, you're grieving over not being able to see your social connections mm -hmm. in person. Um, you may be even grieving your church family because you don't get to see them. Um, and then, you know, the kids, the high school and elementary, they're grieving so many losses. Graduations, mm -hmm. proms, you know, these are important milestones in these kids' lives. Imagine that being taken away without a warning. Mm -hmm. So um, everyone's experiencing an amount of grief right now. One of the things that I've heard a lot is mm -hmm. regarding depression mm -hmm. and anxiety issues. Mm -hmm. So how would I know if I have depression and anxiety? And then I'll follow up with like, how do we know when it comes to our kids or our grandchildren if they mm -hmm. might be experiencing mm -hmm. depression or yeah. anxiety? Good question. I mean, I think a lot of the depression and anxiety, especially anxiety, I think a lot of that is um, coming from um, the loss of predictability, right? Like mm. the things we took for granted, right? Like we never had to worry about um, there being enough food at the grocery store, right? Or as you mentioned in the past, toilet paper at the store. Um, that can make someone very anxious. And then also not knowing if there's gonna be an end to this that can make someone very depressed, right? So what I say is, um, how do you know if you have that? That's a good question. A lot of these symptoms can be common anyway, so people get confused by that, but here's how I would say think about it. If you're feeling grouchy, and I'm talking about not just like having a mood swing, I'm talking about maybe on a daily basis, you know, like even your significant other or someone who's close to you is noticing like, hey, you know, are you okay? because you've been a little more crabbier than usual, right? That can be a sign of um, depression or anxiety. Um, maybe you're not getting enough sleep. You're restless or you're tossing and turning all the time. Or maybe you're, you're oversleeping, you're sleeping all the time. You know, you're taking long naps and you're sleeping more than usual when you should be working or, you know, helping the kids. Um, I would say also um, if you're having difficulty even connecting with people. So if you start noticing that maybe your child doesn't wanna do their online schooling or connect with their friends via Zoom or FaceTime, or if an adult is canceling Zoom appointments, you know, you might wanna wonder what's really going on. Um, the other thing that people tend to do when they're anxious or depressed is they tend to overeat. Mm -hmm. 
they start reaching out for those snacks that they shouldn't be having a little more than usual. Like it's okay to have um, chocolate, right? Or a dessert, you know, you should be kind to yourself. So it's okay to have that. But if you're reaching out for it all the time, especially if you're reaching out to it in lieu of your meal, that's a concern if your child is overeating as well. Um, I would also look for kids who are not eating as much um, because that can be a sign of depress, depression if they're not eating like they should be eating. Um, if they're refusing their meals, um, that can be a sign of depression as well. Um, also, if you notice maybe that you can't just seem to relax, you know, you're always on the go or um, if your child is overly active, um, sometimes that's a sign of, you know, being squirrely, being anxious. They can't, they can't relax. So I would look for those signs. Mm -hmm. What about this, Nancy? We've got a lot of single parents, you know, we've got parents mm -hmm. raising their children and trying to work from home and doing school. And we also have grandparents who are mm -hmm. active in raising their grandchildren for various different reasons. Mm -hmm. What are some of those um, healthy conversations that can be had between a parent or an adult and a child as a way of helping to get the child to talk a little bit about their mm -hmm. feelings? What are, some, what are some tips or how can we have those types mm -hmm. of conversations? Yeah, well, first of all, you should be wanting to have conversation with your mm -hmm. children during this time. Um, because you find out a lot when you ask questions. Um, so be very open about talking about what's going on. Um, ask your child how they feel and don't let them give you a, a word that's not a feeling, like I feel good or I'm okay or I feel bad. Um, we need to let our child that's not a feeling. Please tell me how you feel. So if a child says I'm okay mm -hmm. and we wanna pry a little bit more, how do we follow up on something right. like that? Well, what, you know, tell me what that means. Okay. Yeah, because what it means for a child could be very different than what you think. Um, so I would follow up on those feelings. And once they tell you how they feel, um, you need to validate those feelings. Mm -hmm. So if they tell you they feel sad, um, validate the feelings and let them know, you know, I understand why you feel sad. I, I can see why you feel sad. There's so many things that you're not doing that you usually do, like see your friends and go to school. Um, but getting back to your question, I think adults during this time, especially single parents, I think they can feel very, very overwhelmed. Um, they too are grieving over the loss of having, you know, of going to work, keeping a normal schedule. Um, their normalcy has been taken away. So I, I can see a single parent feeling very overwhelmed with having to not only work, but also be their children's teacher, which is very different, right? We're not, we don't, we don't know how to teach our kids, right? I didn't go to school to be a teacher, so if you ask me to teach my kid, I may not be a good teacher. Um, but with that, I wanna say, um, do the best you can, right? You can only do so much. Um, just try to do the best you can, and if maybe you can't do it all in one day, that's okay. You really do have to lower your expectations during this time. Yeah, it's interesting you mentioned that. My wife always jokes, uh, although it's not funny, but maybe mm -hmm. it's true, mm -hmm. but she says uh, the key to happiness is to lower your expectations. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know what that means, it but really is. it does make sense. It really is. What about this, Nancy? What about the role for, let's talk about parents and grandparents with their children in terms of modeling mm -hmm. behavior mm -hmm. and their children picking that up? Yes. Can you speak into that a little bit? Absolutely. So if you're feeling anxious and not coping with that very well, your child is picking up on that, right? We, whatever we model to our children is the way they're gonna behave. So if we feel overly anxious and we're constantly worried about things, they're gonna feel the same way, right? Um, so helping them feel safe will help with all of that. Having conversations about how to feel safe will help with that. And what does that look like, having a conversation mm -hmm. about how to feel safe? Mm -hmm. Well, like I said when we were talking earlier, if, you know, this is a crazy time, right? So whenever there's a crazy, crazy time, I think the only thing we can do is focus on the positives, okay. right? Do you guys remember when you were young and you watched, um, what's his name, Rogers uh, and Mr. Rogers. Mr. Rogers, oh, right. Sure. What did he say when something bad happened? Look for the helpers. Oh, very good. Right? So when something like this is happening, 
try to pull out all the positives, right? Your, some of your kids are probably so happy that they're not in school because they hate school. We don't want to go to school, right? Now they don't have to go to school. Use that as a positive. Remember how you told me you didn't want to go to school? Guess what? You don't have to go to school anymore. Focus on that. Um, focus on the greater good, right? I'm glad that we don't get to go outside as much, or I'm glad we don't get to see anybody because then we're not getting anybody sick, right? And we don't want to be the ones to get other people sick, right? We want to make sure everybody's safe. So highlight on the greater good. Highlight on um, all the positive things that are coming out of this. How about this? Now, let's say I'm an adult, I'm living by myself, or maybe with this, somebody else, mm -hmm. and I'm beginning to feel overwhelmed, anxious, depressed. Mm -hmm. What are some things that I can be doing to help myself out through this time? That's a really good question. I would say make a list of things that you can control mm -hmm. and things you can't control, right? You can control being kind. You can control um, helping others, but you can't control what's going on around you, right? You can't control how long this pandemic is gonna last. You can't control whether there's enough toilet paper in the store or enough food at the store. Focus on what you can control, which is um, taking care of yourself, um, being good to yourself, connecting with your friends. You can still connect with your friends, right? When they say social distancing, they don't mean physically right? Um, they mean physically, I'm sorry. They don't mean socially. You can still connect with your friends online. You can still Zoom. You can still have Zoom parties, right? Um, you can help others. You know, a lot of churches are offering a lot of helps, a lot of help all over the community. Reach out to your church. Maybe there's a way where you can help others. This question, Nancy, how do I know if what I'm wrestling with, with my mental health, is something that I should talk to a friend about, mm -hmm. talk to a pastor about, or talk to a professional about? How would I know the difference between those? Mm -hmm. Well, you can always well, you reach can out always to a friend and a friend pastor, pastor, right? Pastor, right? But when it gets but to the gets point to where, the point where it's, it's becoming it's too much, much, you should always you reach should out always to your primary care, care provider, provider or get or some, get some professional, health. professional help. There are, there are many places many offering places telehealth, telehealth right, now. right now. So they're still so they're able still to provide able service, to provide service via video-based video telephone based sessions. sessions. Lots, of organizations, Lots of organizations are still providing still telehealth. So, so just because this, just is, because happening, this is happening, it doesn't mean, it doesn't that, mean that, that help is not available. Is not available. It's, actually, it's actually, there's actually more help now, help I feel. Now, I, feel. Mm -hmm. I will say to our Southbrook friends specifically, if you do reach out to any of the pastors, mm -hmm. uh, the pastors do have a list of resources of counselors in the area that we were able to provide so uh, feel free to take advantage of that as well uh, nancy how about a, how about a, a spiritual component question so how do i pray when i'm feeling depressed or how would i ask god to help me when i'm feeling overwhelmed with all that's going on mm -hmm. what i would say to that pastor is before you can help others even for yourself, before you can help others, you have to help yourself, right? You have to take care of yourself. You cannot take care of someone else if you haven't even taken care of yourself. You know what I often think about is when you get on a plane and you're going on a trip, what do they tell you? You put your mask on first, and then you help everyone else. It's the same way with this, right? So I would say help yourself first before you start offering to help other people. You have to be in full prayer, right? before you can pray for others. Um, if you're not in prayer, you're not gonna get that strength that you need to help others. Um, so fill yourself with the word first, right? With prayer, and then you'll have the strength to help others. Um, be nice to yourself, take care of yourself, you know? Um, try to continue to do what you normally do in your routine. Um, and that gives you the strength to help others. Excellent. Nancy, thank you. Thanks for coming. Thanks for sitting here at church and talking. No, no, no. And, you know, it's important that we talk about these things, right? It's mm -hmm. important that we mention mental health. Mm -hmm. It's important we can discuss it, that we can be open with it. Yes. Uh, I will say just a month ago, I called my counselor, and because of the social distancing, we were not able to meet in person, mm -hmm. but uh, we were able to do a phone conversation. And even doing something like that, mm -hmm. I know on my mm -hmm. side was wonderful like it really mm -hmm. helped me out so 
I share that to you and I share that to everyone mm -hmm. as an encouragement that um, this is an unusual time, mm -hmm. uh, but we can lean into God's help. We can lean into what God offers us through his word, through prayer, through his church, mm -hmm. and also through these resources that Nancy mentioned. So Nancy, thank you again. Thanks for coming. And I hope that this is a great help to all of our church family.